In 2018, CH2M Hill Plateau Remediation Company and the Department of Energy implemented enhanced demolition controls and processes at the plutonium finishing plant to enable safe resumption of demolition. PFP has long been recognized as one of the most vulnerable facilities at Hanford, posing a risk to workers, the public, and the environment. The decommissioning and cleanup of legacy contamination required years of effort. In 2016, the demolition of these high-risk facilities began with approximately 80% of the facility footprint completed prior to stopping demolition in December of 2017. Demolition on the plant stopped at that time following a spread of low levels of radioactive contamination. As part of stabilization from the contamination spread, crews removed pre-packaged demolition debris from the PFP footprint. Removing this waste eliminated about 90% of the remaining material at risk, or plutonium-containing material, from PFP. Using a new demolition strategy that includes feedback from workers and new safety controls, workers will remove the remaining 10% of material at risk. It will occur in two phases. The lower risk portion will remove less than 1% of the remaining material at risk. It includes processing and packaging of existing debris from the main processing facility and debris from mobile offices that were demolished prior to the contamination spread. Then, crews will demolish the remaining, less contaminated portions of the main processing facility and the facility's vault. The higher risk phase will remove the remaining material at risk. It will occur following an independent management assessment and State of Washington and DOE approval. The higher risk phase includes demolition of the more contaminated areas. This includes the two former plutonium processing lines inside the main processing facility and the remaining contaminated rubble from the Plutonium Reclamation Facility, or PRF. The rubble has been covered under at least 18 inches of soil and gravel since December. As part of the enhanced controls to ensure safety and prevent the spread of contamination, crews will add exhausters to the former processing lines. That added ventilation helps pull contaminants through filter banks as demolition proceeds starting at the opposite end of these long corridors. Crews will also use heavy equipment to open the top of the tunnels beneath the main processing facility to remove and package the drain pipe that is pre-marked for removal. The pipes have already been filled with epoxy to contain contamination during the demolition process. Once the drain piping is removed, the tunnels will be backfilled with clean dirt to minimize the risk of fall or collapse during the remaining demolition work. For the PRF rubble pile, the soil covering the rubble provides an advantage. An enhanced control includes saturating the soil to prevent contamination from spreading from the rubble pile. Heavy equipment will remove the wet soil and rubble and place it in containers for shipment to the Environmental Restoration Disposal Facility. Following demolition, crews will take soil samples and place a cover cap over the entire PFP concrete slab. Previous radiological boundaries were in close proximity to PFP. Enhanced controls for safety and to prevent the spread of contamination for all aspects of demolition include expanded access and radiological control boundaries. A newly created work control zone limits access to PFP area and personnel performing any work inside that area must coordinate it with PFP. Crews significantly enlarged the radiological buffer area, or RBA, to limit personnel access near the demolition area. Inside the RBA, larger contamination area and high contamination area zones were created, along with airborne radioactivity areas. More employees will be wearing breathing protection, and the larger boundaries help ensure no contamination, even below posted limits, is found outside of boundaries. Additional enhanced controls include major improvements in the number of monitoring locations and frequency of checking for contamination. Three rings of monitoring across a four-square-mile area monitor conditions at PFP. Around the inner ring, closest to the demolition area, continuous air monitors provide instantaneous results of contamination levels viewed remotely. The second ring consists of air samplers and surface samplers called cookie sheets. 
Air samplers provide next day results and surface monitors are checked at least twice a day during demolition activities for contamination. The third ring consists of additional air sampling devices that extends the dedicated monitoring coverage to four square miles. Farther out, extending across the Hanford site, is a system of ambient air monitors that is dedicated to determining whether there are any effects on general air quality from Hanford operations. Samples are pulled every two weeks and checked for any overall radioactivity, with analysis for specific radionuclides done on samples combined over six-month time periods. Several of the monitoring stations are located in the vicinity of PFP. If there is an emergency and a spread of contamination is detected outside the radiological buffer area, DOE could pull and analyze samples from this ambient air monitoring system and analyze them for specific radionuclides within seven to 10 days. Another enhanced control is a technical evaluation to guide the placement of foggers. This will help crews determine exactly where to place them and how to aim them to ensure the water from the foggers controls contamination. Additionally, crews will apply fixative per manufacturer's specifications. Fixative is a paint-like substance to keep contamination from spreading. An enhanced waste loadout process will minimize demolition debris on the ground. As heavy equipment removes portions of the structure, a nearby processor will reduce the size of that debris. A front end loader will carry that debris to one of the loadout areas at PFP for placement into waste bins to be shipped to the Environmental Restoration Disposal Facility. If any loadout area is full of debris, demolition of the building will not resume until the rubble is less than a single day's worth of loadout and the rubble is processed and located at the loadout line. An additional enhanced control is the wider use of respiratory protection. More workers involved in the waste loadout process will wear breathing protection. There is increased oversight and a more rigorous process involving senior management review to change the work packages that govern this work. Additionally, built into the project schedule are opportunities for worker involvement and to review lessons learned, all to ensure the enhanced controls and phased approach to demolition will keep workers safe as they complete the demolition of the plutonium finishing plant.